Good morning, everybody. I greet you as the staff of St. Stithians. Returning to work in this strange world dominated by COVID-19 and lockdown. As you prepare to get into enabling the children at the school to learn and grow in this new environment, we spend a bit of time together in prayer and in God's word. May God's life-giving spirit bless and encourage us. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Your theme be stronger, one and all, led me to this scripture reading. And so we read from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, beginning at verse 12 and reading to verse 27. And it reads as follows. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit all were baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot would say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body. That would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear would say, Because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body. That would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God arranged the members of the body, each one of them as God chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many members, but one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the members of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable, and those members of the body that we think less honourable, we clothe with greater honour, and our less respectable members are treated with greater respect. Whereas our more respectable members do not need this. But God has so arranged the body, giving the greater honour to the inferior member, that there may be no dissension within the body, but the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together. If one member is honoured, all rejoice together. Now, you are the body of Christ, and individually you are members of it. Amen. Thinking about this image reminded me of a family story. Three years ago, my sister broke her left ankle. But she was, of course, needing to do things her way. So she broke the same ankle, not once, but twice within the space of six months. The second break was so bad that most of the medical team attending to her thought that the only way to deal with it would be to amputate her foot. 
Fortunately, the, the chief orthopedic surgeon had other ideas. And so with lots of other bits and pieces, her foot and ankle and everything were reattached and she has recovered. But that incident showed us as family how something so seemingly insignificant as an ankle can make such a world of difference. Your theme for this year and for today's development day is be stronger one and all. And so I wonder what the scriptures then have to say to the staff of St. Stivians as you engage with what it means to be strong and together. Where does weakness fit in? How do we deal with difference and diversity? I think the scriptures we have read can guide us here. Now John van der Laar says, The metaphors that we choose shape how we see things. They speak to us below the conscious, conscious and in a very real sense they create our world for us. And so when we come to this image, this metaphor, the human body as a metaphor for other relationships, we discover that it is it contains rich possibilities of shaping our reality and helping us to engage with one another. Brian Peterson tells us that Paul was the only New Testament writer to use this image, but also that it was a familiar idea and image in the political and cultural world in which Paul lived. And so in particular, philosophers and politicians use the same idea, the human body, as a metaphor for other relationships, whether in the family or in the city or in the Roman Empire as a whole. Of course, when they used it, the idea was to support and affirm the existing political and social and economic conditions. And so, every body needs a head. And in their understanding, the head was, of course, the elite, the wealthy, the rulers, those with access to money and power. And in the same way, they argued, every body needs hands and feet to do the dirty work and the hard work. And of course, that meant everybody else. And so this metaphor of the human body re representing something else became something that was used to entrench an existing way of order, to say, this is the way the world is, and this is how it should be, and we need to accept our place in the world. And that, as I said, had political, social, and economic connotations. So Paul takes this image, this well-known idea, this metaphor, and applies it to the community of Christ. And what Paul does is he does not use it to entrench existing divisions. He doesn't turn it on its head and argue that those who were at the bottom should now be lifted and elevated to the top. Rather, he uses the human body as a metaphor for an entirely new way of being, of being together, of being individuals and being held together with Christ as the head. And so Paul addresses the whole question of strength and weakness in his treatment of the church as the body of Christ. He reminds us that it is in the things that the world regards as weak and foolish that God is most present and active. Throughout his writings, he understands himself, paradoxically, to be one of the weak and the foolish ones, although we know that he has status as a Roman citizen. And for Paul, ultimately, the foundation of this new understanding of relationships is Christ and Christ crucified. God using the foolish things, the weak things of this world in order to create a new humanity and a new reality. And so Paul, rather than arguing that everybody must stick to their place and do as they're told, uses this metaphor to suggest that our being held together in Christ as a community is central to who we are and that 
although we are different and because we are different, we are able to use our gifts to the benefit of the entire body. We know that the church in Corinth struggled. They were held together in Christ, but when you read chapter 11 of the same letter, you discover that even at the Lord's table, the political and social and economic factors of their day served to separate, to divide, rather than provide an opportunity for re-engagement. So Paul calls the church, he calls the community of Christ, he calls us, he calls this body, the staff body of St. Stithians, into a better way of life together. A better way of understanding strengths and weakness. A better way of engaging with what it means for one and for all. He reminds us that our diversity is a gift from God. Not something to be tolerated or regretted or even manipulated, but something to be received as a gift and lived out as a gift. Firstly, that your theme, Be Stronger One and All, opens up into a gift for you as the staff at St. Stithians. The gift which is the opportunity to shape a new community to build new relationships as a staff together. Now, some of you will have been staff at the school for many years. Some of you might be joining the staff for the first time or just beginning to find your feet after a very rocky first term. All of us are included in this gift. Because you see, Paul's understanding is that the church, the community of Christ, you and me and us in this case, is to function as a sign of God's reconciling presence in the world. And that the way in which we do that is to utilize the gifts of our diversity in ways which then model a new way of being. And so the diversity of your staff is a gift, an opportunity to discover and rediscover what it means to belong together, what it means to say, this is who I am, This is who we are. What is our identity as a staff? It's a gift which invites you to discover again how you will need to call on one another and depend on one another for practical help, for emotional and spiritual support, for encouragement. Your theme, Be Stronger, One and All, together with the Methodist ethos that all are welcome and all are included, will challenge you individually and collectively. This gift will stretch you. I like the words which the poet Edwina Gately uses in her poem, Beginnings. She speaks about that which has the function of prodding us into new and different shapes, stretching us where we would not go. And so like the church in Corinth, You may have hoped for a uniformity rather than a unity, but you are gifted with a unity and a diversity beyond your imagining. And so because of the gift, the second thing I offer you today is a calling. I think that you as the staff of this school have the unique opportunity to be part of shaping a new community, not only for yourselves, but for the children who will come to you and cross your paths, for the parents who are connected to them and the broader community of which St. Stithians forms a part. At the Methodist Church's annual conference in September last year, the Reverend Dion Foster led the Bible studies. And in his Bible study, he argued that Paul uses the idea of the church as the body of Christ to encourage us to question the values of the world in which we are located, to argue for diversity and interdependence. He also makes the point that when Christ is the head, the power dynamics of the world cannot go unchallenged and unchecked, particularly in this kind of community in the church. Now, as we face the the so-called storm of the coronavirus, There are various images which have emerged in the last few weeks. One is 
the saying that we're all in the same storm, so let's weather the storm together. But there's a slightly different one which I think might speak to us here. Yes, I think we all are facing the same storm, but we're not all in the same boat. Some of us, perhaps a very few of us, but some of us nonetheless, are in large luxury liners. And the wind and the waves barely disturb our awareness as we go about our daily routine. Some of us are in smaller boats, which are reasonably sturdy and well equipped. And yet we begin to find increasingly that we battle with the storm. But many, 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 many people in this country are not even in that kind of boat. Some might be in a little tiny rowboat and every wave that comes swamps the boat and drenches its occupants. And many might not even be in a boat, but on a little life raft, clinging to it for dear life. And so as the staff of St. Stythians, as we face the same storm, we recognize that we have access to different resources, different gifts, and that you have a unique opportunity to model a new way of being so that those in the, in the little tiny robots and in the life rafts are equipped and resourced, not to the detriment of the luxury yacht at all, but perhaps to the creation of a new boat which holds us all together. We as church community, as Christ followers, are called continually to discern what God's will is. And so beyond the structuring of revised curricula for your various subjects, who you are and how you live together will model to the community around you what it means to be not only in the same storm, but to ensure that everybody is resourced and ultimately perhaps has access to the same boat. The power dynamics, the values, the morals that you will hold are the calling of your diversity. Your theme is be stronger one and all. I invite you to receive that as a gift, your unity and diversity as a wonderful gift, but also to hear the calling again that you have at this moment in this nation. Amen. Friends, I invite us to pray. And we're going to share in two prayers today. The first is from the journal Unbound and is a prayer for our lives. And then the next prayer will be a prayer specifically for the school and its learners and all its staff for the education system in this country. And so let us pray. Let us receive the prayer for our lives. God of our lives, by the power of your Holy Spirit, we have been drawn together by one baptism into one faith, serving one Lord and Saviour. Do not let us tear away from one another through division or hard argument. May your peace embrace our differences, preserving us in unity as one body of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now, friends, I invite us into prayer specifically for the school. We pray for its learners, for all its staff, and for all those involved in the education system at this time. The prayer we will use here has been adapted from one written by John van der Laar. Let us pray. Great God, who created this world of wonders and mysteries, of questions and discoveries, of learning and teaching, we thank you for giving us wisdom and truth, for giving us teachers who help us to learn, for giving us administrative staff who keep things in order, for providing those who offer counselling and support and for custodial staff who ensure that our properties are maintained. Thank you too for learners who are willing to be taught, 
for parents who support and encourage them. Hear us now, O God, as we pray. We pray for the learners who, in this strange world, return to some form of learning and engagement. And we ask that your Holy Spirit will be their guide, that you will empower them to learn all they can and use what they learn in their lives. We pray for the teachers, for the administrative staff, the custodial staff, the counselling and other staff, as they faithfully begin ways of returning to work. May your Spirit be their inspiration empower them as they pass on their knowledge and experience as they do the work of sustaining the life of St. Stivian's College. And then we pray, Lord, for other schools around us, schools with lots of resources and schools with none, schools not only in this country but throughout the world. We pray for environments which are conducive to learning, for creativity and peace, for an access to education which is life-giving and transforming. And then we pray for our Department of Education, for the Minister of Education and all officials who support the journey of learning in this country in particular. We pray for integrity, creativity and wisdom and the courage never to allow the challenges to overcome their commitment to nurture the love of learning in our children. And for each of us who are called as a community to learn your ways, may we use every chance to teach and to learn from each other. This we pray in the name of Christ. Amen. Friends, thank you for having me share this time with you. We close with a charge which is taken from Ephesians chapter 4 verses 1 and 2. A charge for the staff of St. Stivian's College. Lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Amen. May God bless you all.